Hello. Today we're going to look at Mega's HT1000-2 range of telecommunications testers. The complex nature of a modern telecommunications network can make provisioning, maintaining and fixing the infrastructure a hard task. It can also make what should be an easy fix extremely difficult. Mega recognised the potential difficulties and in response built the HT1000-2. This is a high-performance, full-feature handheld instrument designed to provide copper wire provisioning and maintenance technicians with the most critical tests at the touch of a button. Because it's rugged and very portable, with a 30-hour battery life, it is ideal for testing in any location, be it out in the field or for domestic or commercial environments. It also fully meets all key safety requirements. As we'll see in this video, the HT1000-2 is easy to use and versatile, with functions capable of providing for many industry standard testing procedures. Tests can be done individually or run on an automatic sequence. Limits can also be preset. So let's look now at how the HT1000-2 can help technicians in the field determine the suitability of copper cables for modern telecommunications services. The HT1000-2 is a very versatile instrument, with functions capable of providing for many industry standard testing procedures for a vast array of applications. These include testing copper cable installations and faulty connections in physical layer telephony systems, POTS through to 30 MHz, XDSL broadband installations from ADSL through to VDSL2, and the very latest vectored systems, which I'll talk about a little later. The main use of the HT1000-2 is to determine the capabilities of a copper pair in relation to the expected services the pair is to be used for. It does this by using a suite of functions. Some of these will be very familiar to many of you, yet some are designed specifically for the telecommunications industry and will be less known. Modern telecommunication systems are designed specifically for triple play services, sometimes called VDV or Voice Data Video. In the past, these have been provided separately, but with modern systems, all of these services are now delivered across a single twisted pair connection. Telecommunications terminology comes from a long lineage. Some of you will have seen old films and documentaries which show an operator in front of a large bank of sockets plugging and unplugging leads to connect calls between callers. The cables used all followed a standard jack plug layout, with the main feed being the tip, the return being the ring, and an earth providing noise dump and grounding capabilities. This layout may have changed with the use of punch down and RJ45 connectivity, but the naming convention remains. Some countries use tip, ring and ground as identifiers, where some use a shortened A, B and E. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll be using A, B and E in all explanations. The HT1000-2 series has three models in its range, each designed to be used in specific situations. Each model has features similar to the model below it, but with additional features to allow for this specialist testing. Model A is used for testing the physical layer, this encompasses the copper cable's ability to provide telephone services. Model C is capable of providing physical layer testing, but also provides XDSL test capability. Model V is similar to Model C, but also provides vectored DSL test capabilities. Vectored DSL employs line signal coordination and noise cancellation to reduce crosstalk levels and improve line performance. The technology concentrates predominantly on far-end crosstalk removal, mitigating the noise and improving the signal-to-noise ratio. This allows carriage of more bits with less data dropped and therefore increases the line's data rate capability, theoretically enabling digital subscriber line services to approach near fibre speeds over standard copper-paired cables. Now we can look at the specific features of the HT1000-2 series, starting with basic features common to all models. Let's start with connectivity.
For today's presentation, we'll be using a simulation rig. However, the connections via the tester will be the same. This, of course, is not an active exchange, which some tests require, so we will not be able to perform all functions. Main connectivity is made via a set of 4mm test leads, plugged into the dedicated ports. The RJ45 port is for service use only, and should not be connected to a network outlet. A USB port is provided to allow for downloading of saved results to a PC. The DC charge socket is used either with an AC-DC charger or a DC charge lead. Next is navigation. The HT1002 has a number of dedicated keys for specific tasks, but also has multiple use soft keys, which have a different use depending on which function is being used. So let's turn our instrument on now using the dedicated power button. I'm also going to turn on the backlight. It takes between 4 and 9 seconds for the HT1002 to boot up, depending on which model we're using. I have the Model V here, our top model, meaning additional features have to load on boot, so taking slightly extended time. Here we see the startup screen, displaying information about the date, time and battery state. And here are the function icons. These can be selected by pressing the keypad corresponding to the function. So for example, number 5, in this case, would take us to super stress. Selection of a number here can also be used to jump from within a test to another test. So for example, pressing 1 takes us to voltage. To return to the main menu from within a function, you can also press the enter key. From the main screen, you can also navigate with the directional keys to select a function by pressing the Enter button. Now let's go on to look at all the functions available. For most of the functions, connect the test leads black to line A, red to line B, and green to Earth. The yellow test lead is used for TDR and RFL testing and will be explained later in this video. Okay, let's look at voltage. Thank you. 